Hi, I'm Luann Midgley from Tell Your Story Videos, and this is Shop Talk. Today, I'm going to be speaking with Alicia Agarabetia. She is a jeweler and goldsmith from New Westminster, BC, and she makes the most beautiful custom jewelry, and I can't wait to speak with her and show you what she creates. Alicia, welcome to Shop Talk. Alicia, tell us what you do for a living and, and the path that took you here. Sure. I am a goldsmith and jewelry designer. Uh, I apprenticed under my father, who is a master goldsmith, who's been a goldsmith for over 50 years. Uh, but I did not, even though I grew up in the jewelry industry, I didn't actually start making jewelry till I was 26. Um, after high school, I wanted to make jewelry, but everyone kind of told me that it is hard and it's more of like a man's profession. It was really dirty. Like, wasn't there anything else that I liked? So I thought, well, I guess, I mean, I'm 17. What do I know about anything? Uh, so the other thing I loved was reading. So I studied English literature and I'm happy I did. I studied publishing. So I learned a lot about social media and communications, which has obviously been helpful in my business because I, I do manage my own social media platforms. Uh, but one day I kind of hit a uh, fork in the road and I thought I'm going to be working my whole life. And I, uh, I'm just, there's, there's no jobs that are bringing me joy in the city and I've kind of outgrown what I have. So I think it's time to make a change. And I got this idea. I thought, what if I just quit my job and uh, start apprenticing with my dad? And everyone was like, really? Really? That's what you're going to do? You're going to quit your comfortable job with your benefits and your nine to five and your corner like office that you have to learn a trade, a very difficult trade? I was like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Bye. So I, I did. And I've never looked back. Uh, and I mean, I'm very lucky. I apprenticed with my dad. So I I learn a lot, a hands-on through him, um, but that's kind of where I started and where we are today. That's amazing. And and what was your job before? It was in uh, in publishing. In publishing. I was yeah. I worked at. I had a couple different uh, jobs. I was a content writer. I did sports writing, music writing. Um, I was an editor. I, I worked as a publications manager um at a couple at bcit for their student association so i ran all of their publications and all of their branding so something different a little you know there's still a creative aspect to to publishing but it's definitely different than what i'm doing now yes definitely different and and so you you made this decision to to quit your job and to and to get into jewelry making um you've obviously grown up watching your dad who is an incredible jeweler and goldsmith and um and so then you start um working literally alongside of him and and how did that process work like what was it like to learn under your dad how 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 did that uh, relationship evolve well, my dad is a very patient man. Um, one, he needs to be patient for his profession, but he also has three daughters. So he, uh, my first day on the job, he gave me a stack of pennies. This is back when we still had pennies. And then he gave me a fresh pack of saw blades that he told me to cut the queen out of every single penny. I was like, what? I don't even know how to string a saw blade. He was like, well, time to figure it out. He's very hands-on, very, very patient, but always very hands-on. It was never let's watch a video or let's read a book or let's like, instead of starting at a, he would start me at like D every time I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Cause that's, you know, that's just the quickest way to learn. Right. You, a lot of times you learn when you make mistakes and I'm sure I made a lot of those. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it's really great working with my dad because he's kind of old school and I'm new school. So our ideas kind of blend. Sometimes we have competitions with customers where we have like a design competition. I'm like, okay, you do some designs, I do some designs and let's see who wins. And it's interesting to see the different designs we come up with because he has his old classical um, way of thinking and I have my new modern way of designing. So, or, you know, a lot of times I'll say, hey dad, I have this idea. He's like, you can't do that. I'm like, really? let's try it and he's like okay sometimes it works and he's like oh I'm really I'm really surprised and sometimes it fails miserably he's like I told you so it's it's definitely fun working with my dad I've always wanted to spend more time with family and being able to do this job was a great way to do that because I literally see now my parents multiple days a week so and you have a a, a lovely nickname for your dad <laughs> yes the Fonz his name's Alfonso uh, only I call him the Fonz. I mean, every once in a while, some of his uh, friends will joke around, but I started a hashtag for him called uh, Made by the Fonz. 
And at first my dad was like, what do you mean made by the Fonz? But now he's like, you know, that thing you, you put on the internet about me. I'm like, oh, oh, now you like it. (laughs) So it's quite funny. So you have different techniques, you and your dad, um, and then you have your niche and and what you like to create. Um, how, How did you, how did you get there? How did you know that this is what, this is your style and how are you guided? Well, I think it's hard. I actually think about this a lot because I I don't even know if I have a style. And I I've sometimes thought like I wish I had a style. I there's other jewelry designers who I admire so much because they very specifically have a style. Every collection is similar. Most of the work I do is custom. Every job I do is different. Uh so it could be modern, it could be traditional, it could be classic. Like ev- every piece is going to be different, which kind of makes custom work hard to nail down to a certain style. Um, When I am designing the piece for someone, often it will fit closer to my style. Um, If, Like I said, if I had a style, but I would definitely say that I'm more in the niche, of course, of custom jewelry and specifically using people's old jewelry. Although I can definitely supply materials um, of any kind, what I really enjoy is using people's old jewelry. it's just, it's fascinating to see the kind of things that walk through the door and the stories that people have and jewelry they don't wear and then turning it into something new. So that is kind of my niche that people know me for. Um, and kind of excited about it. Well, it certainly attracted me to you. And um, because I do think it is very unique and very different. Um, and, and you and I have just recently worked together, uh, t- tell, uh, tell us about your project that you do every so often called the metamorphosis project. Um, wh- how did you come up with this and, and, and why do you do it? So metamorphosis started, uh, when I first started making jewelry actually. Uh, so when, when it comes to jewelry making for people, sometimes people will walk in and they'll specifically tell you what they want. Like, I want exactly this. Some people will come in with a few ideas and say, how do we bring these ideas into one? Some people will say, I have no idea what I want. So can you just design a few things for me? Um, or they'll send me photos of things they like, but they don't really like, they, they don't really know. And I'll kind of put that together. Uh, but what I was finding as an apprentice, a new apprentice, I thought, well, I was always, I had, my dad had this big bucket of scrap silver and I was always rummaging through it and being like, why is this being melted? This is so cool. Like, let's turn this, let's move this, let's cut this. Let's, and I would try to basically like a junk collector as my dad would call me. I would, you know, one man's junk is another man's treasure. I would try to turn it into something uh, new in its existing form. And a lot of the jobs I was getting, people were very specific about what they wanted. So there wasn't very uh, much room for creativity. So I just got to thinking and this project came about where I thought, well, what if I find volunteers to let me turn their old jewelry into something new? Um, it's my design. It's my choice. I will try to keep parts of what they have in their current form if possible. Sometimes you can't and you have to melt it all. But if there's a way for me to keep certain things in their true form, I will. Um, I'll just, you know, morph them into something new. So that's kind of how it started. And over the years, it's evolved. I used to do the project a lot more. And um, as my projects get more and more complicated, and I get busier, I'm not doing it less, especially because I really want it to be something that feels right to me when I do it. If I'm going to put this energy and time into it, I really want to feel passionate about the piece. So um, to put that energy into it, I just I do less. But it's very exciting. It's also very nerve wracking. Certainly. Um, but as soon as you posted that, I mean, that, that was very intriguing to me. I went, Oh, <laughs> I have to um, message you and see if I can be a candidate because I knew right away about a, a ring that I, I had. And um, it, it was a ring that was given to my, my mom. Uh, by a family and and a gratitude as a gratitude as a thank you for um, uh, something that she had done for them special and it was an incredible gift but you know it wasn't my style and it was sitting in my jewelry box all this time and uh, and I would put it on and I would think oh maybe I'll wear it and then I would just it just didn't fit it didn't suit me it didn't suit my style so I put it back in the jewelry box and there it would stay so I knew that that was um, uh, something that I could present to you and give to you and say, hey, can we can we do something with this? Well, and that's a thing. A lot of times people, they want to keep things in their original form because they feel like 
it's bad form to melt it, especially if it was a gift. But a lot of times, I mean, it's like, it's, you're not really doing the memory of the person who gave it to you justice. If it's just sitting there collecting dust. Right. I'm very much um, on board to try to keep things in their, like, it, even if it means fixing something and not melting it. I, I, be, I believe there's a time and a place to keep stuff and not melt it. But if it's not your style. And also, I just wanted to change it into something completely different. Um, I am very much into pendants and um, long chains. So that's why I was very open for a complete transformation of, of the ring. And um, and so uh, it was. You, we did the reveal, you and I, together the other day. And I'm wearing it now. And it's very, very special. And I don't know if I can show it properly, but this is what you created. And it's beautiful. It's a moon, two faces of a moon, um, which represents my mom and myself. Now, the reason behind the moon is because mom and I loved the moon together. Um, so it was always something that was in common with us and loved looking at all the different phases of the, of the moon. And my mom passed away um, in 2011. So this is why this is uh, super special for me. And I just want to po point out one more thing that's really interesting is um, you chose Mother of Pearl. Um, as the stone yeah. and this is my mom's memoir and if you can see this is called my precious wow. pearls <laughs> wow, <it's> like <laughs> all the stars aligned for this project literally I, did, I didn't know that until this morning I thought I want to have my mom's memoir with me while I do this interview and I looked at the title and I couldn't believe it <laughs> that's so interesting that's such a coincidence yeah. So, so definitely you take story and um, as well as the jewelry and, and combine them to create uh, something beautiful. So, um, so I thank you very much for, for my uh, metamorphosis um, reveal and project and, and working with you has been wonderful. You're welcome. It's uh it's always a joy to create something special, something new for someone. So you also do a lot of for the community and giving back to the community. It's it's an important um, part of your business. Um, how, how do you go about doing that? Well, normally uh, I do seasonal collections and from every sale, I donate to a different charity. Um, this year has been a bit strange. I didn't get very many collections done because I had a baby. Um, but I am actually working on a secret collection right now that nobody knows about. I've been slowly picking it away at it um, and I will be donating from there. But the biggest thing I kind of started was uh, custom jewelry events at local boutiques. Uh, I started specifically doing them too uh, in New Westminster where I live uh, to kind of keep um, business in the community. You know, it, it's hard, rents are going up. It's hard to have a business. It's nice to be able to support other businesses and, and bring people to their to their stores or to their businesses. Um, so that was kind of a way in the community to have more, not even have more of a presence, but just bring people in and and reach out to other local business owners and say, how can we work together to to help each other? Because um, it's, I mean, I'm always going to donate to charities. I'm working actually on an auction piece right now as well for another fundraiser for a, another charity. Um, and I'll always do that. I've always done that from a young age when I actually the first the very first thing I put on my very first credit card um, was a monthly donation to a charity. Uh, it's, it's just something I've always grown up doing. So I will continue to do that. But I'm always thinking, OK, well, what can I do within the community and that kind of works with my business, but also helps another business. Um, and this all started too when I saw other little stores closing in New West, which I thought was kind of sad because those little stores are the backbone of a community. So if all those little stores, it doesn't matter what they sell, if they all start closing, what do you have left? There's nothing wrong with big box stores. They employ a lot of people. They are fabulous businesses for that. But they're also generic. So if all these little stores that people put their heart and soul into, they all close, what do you have left? Not, not a whole lot of heart and soul, right? So that's kind of why I'm always actively trying to do things like the cultural crawl uh, in New West to engage more with people and then tell them more about these other projects that I do that also help the community. So 
Oh, that's wonderful. Um, yes, on your Instagram account, you're definitely a big part of the community, your new Westminster community. And um, and your uh, jewelry is just beautiful, Alicia. I, I, I uh, wish the best to you uh, going forward with your business. And, and how many years of business are you in now in, in creating jewelry? This year was my 10th year. I had my 10 year anniversary this year. So yeah, it's, where is the time gone? Uh, well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day today um, to uh, speak to us about what you do and show everyone your beautiful work and uh, all the best to you in the future. Thank you so much for your time. And it was lovely working with you. Look forward to doing it again. Thank you. Thank you.